Copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 130. Be on the lookout for Andrew Holman, described as American, 5 feet 8 inches, 135 pounds, 35 years old, wearing a brown chinchilla coat. This man shot and killed Detective Paul Lee of the fugitive detail this evening. That's all. At the close of tonight's broadcast, we have three very important guests we wish to introduce. Don't miss this special feature on tonight's program. These true crime dramatizations are created and sponsored by Rio Grande because this company is in such close touch with police work in the many leading cities and counties of the West that specify Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively to power their police and emergency cars. And the drivers of these police cars are such boosters for this gasoline that Rio Grande is proud to tell the public through this program of the heroic deeds of the police officers who use Rio Grande cracked gasoline daily to meet emergencies. Cruising slowly along, hour after hour, these police cars suddenly get a radio call for help. Down goes the throttle. The engine roars into action. Rio Grande cracked gasoline meets the emergency with instantaneous power. Precious seconds are saved as Rio Grande Crack develops top speed without the sluggishness or delay characteristic of uncracked gasoline. No wonder thousands of police drivers and the drivers of fire engines, ambulances, and motorcycles are so enthusiastic about Rio Grande Crack. No wonder this gasoline powers more emergency equipment everywhere it is sold than any other brand. The most convincing proof of the efficiency of Rio Grande Crack gasoline is its use year after year for the most difficult job any gasoline has ever had. In your car, too, Rio Grande Cracked will produce the same sensational speed, power, and acceleration that makes other users of Rio Grande Cracked gasoline boast about their police car performance. And now it is our pleasure to present Captain Bert Wallace, head of the Homicide Squad of the Los Angeles Police Department. Captain Wallace. Good evening, friends. How much money would you want to risk your lives day in and day out? How much would you demand to take a job where you knew that any moment your career might be permanently ended by a bullet? Would you want $100 a week to take such a risk? Or do you value your life at a higher rate, say 500 or 1,000? Whatever your valuation is, I feel sure you would expect more for such a risk than your police officers receive. And your police officer, every moment he is on duty, is taking this risk that the peace of your community may not be violated. This statement is no idle romancing. There isn't a police officer on the force who has not had a brother, officer, and close friend taken from him by the bullet of a lawbreaker. No one realizes more than the police officer the real meaning of that much-used phrase, the war against crime. It is a real war to these men who may at any moment sacrifice their lives. It is a fight to the finish. As you may realize after hearing the details of the Holman case, which started with a routine police matter and ended with three tombstones in the cemetery. It is a few days before Christmas in 1932 when Detective Paul T. Lee and H.C. Lindley of the Fugitive Detail of the Los Angeles Police Department are called into the office of their captain. Come in, boy. Come in. Have a seat. What's up, Jack? I've got a request from the sheriff of Marin County, Paul. He wants us to pick up a fellow by the name of Abe Schiller. Yeah? What's he want him for? Forgery. Here's the warrant for his arrest, and here's his mug and description. Hmm. Hmm. That's quite a record, hasn't it? Yeah. You got any tips on where we might find him, Captain? Yes, Lindley. According to the sheriff's information, he's pretty thick with a girl by the name of Flo Barnes. 
You got a little spot out on Wilshire near Whitmer. I've jotted the address down here, and I suggest you go out and talk to her first. Okay, Cap. We'll get on it right away. <laughs> Apartment, Paul. Name's on the door. And push the buzzer. Okay. Come back later. I'm busy. So are we. Come on, open up. Who is it? I imagine you got a pretty good idea. Better open up the door now, like a nice girl. Oh, all right. Oh, I thought it sounded like bulls. What's the beef? Nothing for you to worry about. We're looking for Abe Schiller. Abe Schiller. I don't know no Abe Schiller. My partner said we weren't going to worry you, and that's so if you're on the up and up with us. Well, sure, I'm willing to. All right. Where's Abe Schiller? I don't know. On the level, I don't. Expecting him? Well, I never know when he's going to drop around. Maybe he will, and maybe he won't. I think we'll just drop in and wait for him. Oh, you can't do that. You see, I'm not... You don't have to dress for us. We're not company. Besides, that come on, is becoming to you, Flo. Hmm. Aren't you going to ask us to sit down? Okay, have a seat. Oh, it's a pleasure. What is that noise? Somebody in the other room. What's the idea, Flo? A double cross? Come out of there, you. Get your hands in the air. Yes, sir. I'm coming. Who is this guy, Flo? A friend of mine. What's his name? I, I don't know. What's your name, buddy? Eddie. Eddie Tremont. What are you doing here? Well, just visiting. Where do you work? Down on 7th Street at a gas station. And you better get out of here and beat it back to the gas station. It's in a very healthy place for punks. Yeah, yes, sir. You've got a nerve. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Flo, entertaining kids like this. And you ought to be ashamed scaring them half to death. I'm sorry, Flo. Sorry for what? Well, you know. Beat up before these two flatties run you in for a bag. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye, kid. See you down on 7th Street someday. Now, look here, Flo. There ain't no sense in getting tough. We might as well be friends. What for? Why not? You can make it tough for us, and maybe someday we'll make it tough for you. Or you can make friends with us, and you won't be sorry. Well? What do you know about Abe Schiller? Nothing much. How long have you known him? Oh, off and on for a couple of years. What's he do for a living? I never asked him. Why? What do you got on him? Forgery. That's possible. I'll go. No, no, you won't. You stay right where you're at. I'll answer the door. Who are you looking for? Watch it to you. Who are you? Police officer. Oh, a police officer, eh? Hey, come back here. Look, I'm officer. He's got a gun. Oh, Oh, you you hurt that? I did that, partner. I guess. I guess I... Off away at the corner of 7th and Whitmer, William Swan is halted by a red signal light when a man jumps onto the running board of his car. Swan looks up into the blue steel mouth of an automatic. Button up, you little buddy. You sing and I'll blow daylight through you. No, well, well, what do you want? You know, you're helping me to a getaway, see? Just drive what I tell you. Oh, but listen, I got a date, but my girl's waiting for me. Yeah? Well, there's a rope waiting for me if I don't get out of this beef. There's the bell. Well, what are you waiting for? But, 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 I ain't kidding, buddy. Now get going. All right, turn. Turn left to the seven. And then get over to Bixler to wait. And act natural, you mug. So that's the way it happened, Cap. Paul died on the way to Georgia Street. Paul was one of my best friends. And it had to be me that sent him to his death. You can't look at it that way, Captain. It's all part of our business. Yes, I know. But I never can get used to it. Seeing fine men like Paul Lee go out of the picture at, at the hands of some dirty rat. Mm, this dirty rat will pay up pretty quick. Get a pretty good description of him? Mm, better than that. I got an identification from the girl, Flo. You did? Yeah. She says she knows the guy. I brought her in to show her the mug book and get a positive identification. She's outside. You want to talk to her? Yeah, bring her in. Morning, Captain, this is Flo Barnes. Glad to meet you, Miss Barnes. Won't you be seated? Thanks. 
You were a witness to the murder of Detective Lee? Yeah, but I didn't have anything to do with it, Captain. I swear I didn't. And let me assure you that you're not under suspicion of any sort. But we would appreciate your assistance. I've always kept out of jams. I don't like this one. No, we don't either. But it's our job to find the man who murdered Paul Lee. Not that arresting him will return Paul to his family. But because that murderer is a threat to society as long as he remains at liberty. You realize that I may be putting myself on the spot if I help you. Yes, and we'll give you every protection you need. Who shot Lee? Well, it was Andy Holman. Where does he live? I don't know. Really, I don't. Is he a friend of yours? Well, he, he drops in to see me every now and then. He's an ex-con. Here's the mug book, Flo. Oh. You recognize his picture? Yeah, that's him, all right. I'd say so, too. Andy Holman, eh? San Quentin, number 31926. Sent up for first-degree robbery. Parole, June 1st. Hmm, he's only been out six months. Beg pardon, Captain. Yes, Mac. There's a man out here who was sent over from Central. He's got a report to make that may connect up with the shooting. Send him in. Yes, sir. You come in, please. Uh, are you the captain? Yes, what is it? Well, the guy just held me up and made me drive him halfway across town with his gun in my ribs. Where did this happen? Well, uh, I was waiting for a green light at the corner of 7th and Whitmer Street. 7th and Miller? Yeah. That's just a couple of blocks from Flo's apartment, Skipper. What did this fellow say? He told me to keep quiet and drive him where he wanted to go. Did you? Did I? With that automatic of his tickling me? You bet your life I did. Where did you take him? Well, he got out the corner of 8th and Hill. And what did he look like? Well, he... It was about medium height, and he wore a brown chinchilla coat. Did he look anything like this picture? Uh, yeah, that's him. Are you sure? Positive. Get me the complaint board. Hello. Put out an all-cars broadcast to pick up Andrew Holman. Described as American, 5 feet 8 inches, 130 pounds, 35 years, slender build. <laughs> But with every Los Angeles police officer alertly watching for the murder of Detective Lee, and with every California city and county promising cooperation in the manhunt, Andy Holman cleverly continues to elude capture. A month later, he is still at liberty, planning another crime in an east side speakeasy with his two confederates, Sterling McLean Smith and Tommy Bender, and Tommy's girl, Stella. Hey, boys, this will be a cinch. A little branch bank out in the valley and not a bull for a mile. How much do you think it's good for, Andy? Well, you don't want to be 20 grand in that place, Tommy. You're going to have a swell time helping Tommy spend six or seven thousand bucks, ain't you, Stella? Yeah. You don't sound very interested. Oh, sure. I'm interested in keeping Tommy out of trouble. Ah, he can't get into no trouble on this job. It's a pushover. Uh, don't you worry about me, baby. I'll be all right. All you've got to worry about is how you'll spend the dough. Hey, listen, Stella. I know how to pick him, see? And when I met Tommy up at Quentin, I sized him up for a smart chin. The only reason he took that weapon was because he made a mistake. And he learned lots of lessons in stir. Didn't you, Tommy? You bet. Seems to me he didn't learn the most important lesson. Yeah? What's that? That you can't win against the Bulls. Yeah, What's that dame know about this record? Dames ought to have any opinions. Dames ought to be left in home. All right, Mac, lay off Stella. Yeah, I just made a general statement. Seems to me you guys are wasting a lot of time shooting off your face. When do we pull this job, Andy? Tomorrow morning, about 11.30. The bank's pretty empty, then. You'll handle the car, Mac. And Tommy and me will knock the joint over. Don't you think I ought to go in with you? No, I want to give Tommy a little first-hand experience. I've got a lot of confidence in him. Gee, thanks, Andy. Tommy, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like you to take me home. I've got a headache. Oh, sure, honey. I, I, I'd be glad to, only... Well, we got to plan this thing. And... Of course, if you don't want to leave, I can take a cab. I'm oh, not eat that baby, but don't you see... Oh, on, Tommy, take her home. Take her home. And be over at my spot tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. I'll tell you what to do then. Okay, Andy. Come on, Stella. I'll see you in the morning, boys. Okay, kid. So long, kid. Tommy, you mustn't go out with them tomorrow. Yeah, but I got it, baby. I'm in this thing with them. But you don't have to be. Why, well, you're only out of prison two months and you're starting in again. Do you know what they do when you break your parole? Ah, they're never going to know anything about it. With that dough, you and I can go off to China in some place and be set for the rest of our lives. I'll never touch a cent of that money, Tommy. What? I mean it. 
If you go out on that job with them tomorrow, I'm through with you. Can't you see what you're running into? Even if it wasn't wrong, you can't trust that Andy Holman. He'd double-cross his own mother. Now, now listen, Stella, you don't know Andy. He's a swell guy. Why, he did more for me up in Quentin than anybody. He made it easy for me with a big shot up there. I owe him plenty. So your idea of paying him back is to hold up and swim him. Oh, look, Stella, I'm lucky that he wants me to work with him. There's plenty of other guys that jump at the chance. I'm a lucky guy, I tell you. You're an ungarnished fool, Tommy. If you go out with Andy tomorrow, you've seen me for the last time. <laughs> Right, folks, we're leaving now. And if you know what's good for you, you'll not get out of peace for five minutes. How about it, Tommy? Here's the dough. I put everything I can move into this poke. Good. Give it to me. Now you cover me while I get into that car. Okay, I'll stay right here. You call me. You're all set, Andy. Set. And listen, here comes the cops. Step on it, then, kid. What about the kid? That devil with him. We've got ourselves to think about. Hey, hey, Andy, wait a minute. Wait for me, Andy. You can't leave me here. Fella, drop that gun and throw up your hands. Come along with me, Bender. Oh, for what, turnkey? They're not going to question me again, are they? No, nope, you got a visitor. Yeah? Who is it? I don't know. Come on. In this office here. Stella. Oh, Tommy, darling. Oh, but... But you said you'd never see me again if I went on that job. I know it, but you idiot. Oh, I guess I'd forgive anything you did. Oh, gosh. You don't know what it means to know I have at least one friend in the world. Come on, sit down at this desk here. Tell me all about it. You look worn out. Have they been hard on you? Well, they, they haven't let me get much sleep trying to find out who was on the job with me. Well, why don't you tell them? Not me. I'm no squealer. Oh, Tommy, you're such a fool. What are Shut you... up, Stella. Why, tell me, what's the matter with you, shouting like that? And what are you drumming on the table for? You see that lamp? Yes. Well, there might be a dictaphone in it. This drumming will cover our conversation. Why don't you tell them who was with you, honey? They'll make it easier for you. Well, it's not a squealer, shall we? But can't you see that Andy double-crossed you? He drove away from that bank out there and let you take the rap. Well, he couldn't help it. The cops were coming. He deliberately threw you to them to make his own getaway. I told you that guy wasn't on the level. Well, even if what you say is the truth, I ain't going to score I took my chances and I lost, and, well, that's that. You know, they'll throw away the key on you when you go up this time. Well, that's just too bad. But I ain't going to get out of this at Andy's expense. I'm going to get you out, and I don't care who pays the bill. I don't know why I should break my heart over a fool like you, but I can't help myself. Oh, no, Stella, look, it's better this way. I'll ride the beef, and then when I get out, I'll, I'll go straight for sure. Then we can start all over again. What? You expect me to wait ten years for you? You think I can stand that? I want you right now, and I'm going to get you. So that's the real lowdown on that job, Captain. Tommy wasn't a bad kid. He, he's just a fall guy. The men you want are Andy Holman and Stuart McLean Smith. We're not half as interested in Holman for this bank job as we are on a little murder rap. A murder? Yeah. We've been looking for him for two months. He shot a police officer in cold blood just before Christmas. I'm not surprised. He's capable of anything. Would you be willing to help us? I'll do anything to see that rap where he belongs. But if I do, will you spring, Tommy? I can't make you any promises. But I believe that the extenuating circumstances you've indicated will influence the jury when you testify at his trial. Furthermore, I can assure you that the reward on Holman's head will go to you if you turn him in. Even if I didn't get a cent of that reward, even if Tommy has to go up, I'm not going to stop until I've turned Andy Holman over to you. But Stella, with her underworld contacts, is scarcely more successful than the police has been in their search for the murderer. Two weeks go by while the avenging girl spends every waking hour seeking home and inquiring for him, visiting the places she knows he frequents. And then, as she enters a coffee joint on Main Street one night, she sees Holman and Smith seated in the back booth. Striving to appear casual, she approaches them. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Stella. Hey, Stella. Uh, mind if I sit down? No, help yourself. Well, what have you boys been keeping yourself? Laying low. Uh-huh, that's what I thought. So what a tough one, Tommy, eh, Stella? Yeah, wasn't it? Just a bad break, that's all. 
We couldn't wait for them with the bulls on our tail. Yeah, I understand. Now, we've been afraid they'd give him the works down to the jail and he'd sing. Now, Tommy, you ought to know that. He's loyal. Loyalty's got nothing to do with it when the bulls start working out on you. Tommy can take it. It's tough on me, of course. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next 10 or 15 years while he's up there. You know, I never could figure you and him out, Stella. What do you mean? Well, he's a, he's a good enough kid, but he's, well, he's still a kid. And you, well, you've got lots of savvy. You could have done a lot, done a lot better than him. Yeah? Looks like I'll have to start looking around now that he's out of the way. Well, you wouldn't have to look far. What do you mean? No farther than across the table. Who, Mac? Huh? Hey, leave me out. No, not Mac. He don't exactly waste no love on women. I mean me. I had a yen for you for a long time, Stella. And now that Tommy's out of it, I don't mind telling you so. Gee, Andy, I didn't have any idea. Well, what do you think about it? Well, uh, I think it'll be okay. He fell for it like a ton of bricks, Captain. That big chump thinks I'm going to move in with him tomorrow. That's splendid, Stella. Now, here's the address. Apartment 301 at 598 South Normandy. He's going to be out tomorrow chasing a bank job, and he's expecting to meet me at the apartment at 5.30. Good. We'll have a squad of men out there by 3 o'clock. The next afternoon, a squad composed of detectives Homer Spencer, Ralph Davis, Harry Birch, Cliff Gillen, and Miles Ledbetter drive up to the Normandy Avenue address. Parking or sneak cars around the corner, they approach the apartment house. Spencer, Davis, you hide in that garage across the street. Okay, that better. Birch and Magnus cover the rear of the place. Right. And Gillen, you come inside with me. Now get this, boys. We don't want any shooting if we can help it. But we do want Holman. If we can't take him alive, we'll take him dead. There's just one thing for you to remember. And that's what this guy did to Paul Lee. Yeah, we okay, on. boys, take your positions. And you men on the outside, let him get in the building. We'll try to arrest him in there. You've got to be sure that he doesn't make a getaway. Come on, Gillen. Well, better tip off the landlady that there may be some shooting. Uh, here's her apartment. Yes? We're police officers, ma'am. Yes? We're looking for the man who lives in 301. You mean Mr. Holman? Yes. Well, I, I don't think he's in. I know he isn't. What are you after him for? Murder. Murder? A murder in my and house? Not so loud, ma'am, please. Now, we've got the place surrounded, and we're going to arrest him when he comes in. Uh, there may be some shooting, so I'd advise you to stay in your apartment this afternoon. But you can't do that. Shooting in my house, I, I assure you that we don't want to if it can be avoided. But if it's necessary, then the safest place for you is right inside your apartment. Oh, now there's one more thing. Will you give me the pass key to his apartment, please? We want to search it thoroughly before he gets back. Well, I... All right. Here it is. That's fine. Thank you very much. You've nothing to fear as long as you don't go out of your apartment. Oh, don't worry. I, I won't. Come on, Gillen. Let's give this place the once over. Is there any chance of that Stella Dame's giving us a run around? Mm, sure, there's always a chance of that. But I got a hunch she's on the level. You sure got it in for Holman. Uh, and here's the apartment. Let's see if that pass key works. Uh, here you are. Hmm. Looks like they just moved in. Bags aren't unpacked yet. Uh, this one's plenty heavy. Uh, open it up. Uh, it's locked. Yeah, we'll fix that quick enough. There. What, what the love of Mike. A shotgun and a half dozen pound of them. Uh, uh, look at these boxes of 32 shells. A regular arsenal. We just moved this across the hall to that empty apartment the painters have been working in. Uh, and that looks like a good place to stake out to me. We can leave the door open the way it is, and then we can have an unobstructed view of them as they come up the hall. Okay. Let Better and Gillen take up their post in the vacant apartment, while the other four officers have secreted themselves in the front and back of the building. They tense two hours pass while the officers scan each passing car while the landlady, in an agony of suspense, paces her apartment, while led the veteran Gillen stiffen at the slightest noise. 
And then, a few minutes before 5.30, a car drives up to the apartment house and Coleman and Smith get out. At that moment, a friend of the landlady's telephones her. As the two gunmen mount the front steps of the apartment, Spencer and Davis across the street grasp their drawn guns tightly. Coleman and Smith are arguing as they enter the building. Yeah, I tell you, Andy, all you're going to get is grief if you tie up with that Stella twist. Dames is dynamite. Ah, you worry too much, Mike. Yes. He's a good kid. Hey, listen. I'm not frightened. I don't know what to do. Did you hear that? Yeah. Let's lay him out of here. Okay. Up with your hands. Hold on. Let him up. Hold on. Hold on. officers saved the people the expense of the trial. Stella received the reward which officers had offered uh, for the murderer. And Abe Schiller, the unwitting cause of Detective Lee's death, was subsequently arrested in Santa Barbara and admitted his guilt of the charge of forgery made against him by the Marin County authorities. At this time, I want to thank the many citizens who send information into the police department to help the law enforcement agencies run down criminals. Tonight, I have with me three young men whose names were in the headlines today for their fine work. Did you read how three junior detectives found the hidden loot of many burglaries on a garage roof? They reported their discovery to the police, and as a result, we have just captured the phantom bandit suspected of many recent burglaries. Mr. Lindsley will introduce you to the three members of the Rio Grande's Junior Police Department. Thank you, Captain Wallace. Ladies and gentlemen, I will introduce first Winston Moore, captain of his own squad of junior detectives. Captain Moore, how old are you? Eleven years. You directed the search for the phantom burglar, didn't you? Yes, but Charles O'Hare here worked right with me. Well, we'll call you Lieutenant Charles O'Hare. Thanks, but give the credit to my brother, Bob O'Hara. He really found the stolen goods. Congratulations, Bob. How did you do it? I climbed on top of a garage and found where the burglars hid them. Well, that was mighty good work. And in behalf of the police department, I thank you for your help. And in behalf of the Rio Grande Junior Police Department, I hereby present each of you with a new badge. You are all promoted to captaincies in the Rio Grande Junior Police Department. Gee, thanks. The Rio Grande Oil Company has also asked me to give each of you a complete junior detective outfit. Here for each of you is a Sam Brown uniform belt, a G-Man gun, a detective microscope, a fingerprint outfit, a police whistle and siren and a lot of other articles you need in your junior police work. We want all the hundreds of thousands of boys and girls who now belong to the Rio Grande Junior Police Department to have this complete detective outfit, too. Rio Grande offers 15 free gifts to every boy and girl listening in tonight. Go to the dealer in your neighborhood who sells Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Ask him for a free copy of the Calling All Cars News and learn how you can become a member of the Rio Grande Junior Police Department and get a complete G-Man outfit of 15 different articles, all free. to enjoy police car performance in your own cars must realize that while Rio Grande cracked gasoline will revolutionize your car's performance, the wrong grade of motor oil will cut down your car's efficiency. We ask you to use Sinclair motor oils, 
which are sold everywhere you get Rio Grande cracked gasoline. There's no measured drag with Sinclair oil. By perfecting the processes of extracting petroleum jelly and useless wax, Sinclair developed the first of the faster flowing oils that provide instantaneous lubrication when you start your engine. We want you to realize the big difference Rio Grande cracked gasoline makes in your car, and we know that if you also use Sinclair motor oil, you will enjoy all the thrills of police car performance. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, a cancellation broadcast 130 regarding the murder of Officer Lee. This case is now closed. Rose and Clerk. Thank you.